Hey, it's your boy. Kartikar is back with another dose of no BS truths. Okay, so now listen up, because this is not your average self-care spiel. We're going to go deeper. We're talking about that burning passion that drove you to start your business in the first place. Remember that fire? The one that feels like it could melt on mountains and reshape the world? So, well, what happens when that fire starts to flicker, when that hustle starts to feel like a drag and your to-do list looks more like a torture chamber? That, my friends, is called burnout. And it's not just about being tired. It's a full body, mind and soul exhaustion. It's the thing, it's when the thing you love starts to feel like the thing that's sucking your soul dry. Now, you might be thinking, burnout, that's for weaklings. I'm a boss, baby. I can handle anything. But for one second, let's challenge that belief. What if burnout is not a weakness? What if it's actually, what if it's actually a signal, a neon sign flashing danger that something is out of alignment? What if it's telling you that your current hustle strategy is not sustainable, that your heart and your hustle have become disconnected? And most importantly, what if there's a way to reignite that passion, to find a rhythm that nourishes your soul and your business. So that's what we're gonna dive in today. Um, oh, so get ready to dish the hustle mentality and create a business that fuels your fire instead of extinguishing it. Let's dive in. All right, ladies, let's cut the crap and get real. We've all been fed this fairy tale about the hustle. You know, the idea that if you just work harder, sacrifice more, and push yourself to the limit, success will magically appear. But what if I told you that this relentless pursuit of the hustle is actually the one holding you back? What if it's the very thing that's draining your passion and leaving you feeling burnt out? Here's the truth, Mom. The hustle mentality is a trap. It's a one-way ticket to exhaustion, resentment, and a whole lot of unnecessary stress. Think about it. How many times have you sacrificed sleep, family time, or even your own well-being for the sake of your business? How often have you pushed yourself past your limits, convincing yourself that rest is for the weak? Now, I'm not saying ambition is a bad thing. Far from it. But when your ambition becomes an obsession, when the hustle becomes, you know, when the hustle consumes every waking moment, it's time to reevaluate, you know. Okay, so let's break down the first sign that your hustle must be turning. Okay, so let's break down the first sign that your hustle might be turning toxic. Feeling constantly exhausted. Look, I know, I know it's not that, you know, big of a sign, but hear me out. I'm not talking about that I need another cup of coffee kind of tired. I'm talking about bone deep, soul sucking exhaustion. The kind, you know, that makes you feel like you're dragging your body through quicksand and your brain is running on fumes. Sound familiar? If so, you're not alone, sis. It's easy to fall into the trap of believing that this is just the price we pay for success. And we tell ourselves, I'll rest when I reach my goals, or I just need to push through this busy season. It's just a season. But here's the truth. Constant exhaustion is not a badge of honor. It's a warning sign that something's seriously out of whack. And ignoring it will not make it go away. It'll just make things worse. Think about it. When you're running on empty, everything suffers. Let's take your baby, the one thing that you built from the ground up your business, you're less creative, you're less productive, and more prone to making mistakes. When you're burnt out, you might miss opportunities struggling to make decisions and find it hard to stay motivated. Even though motivation is garbage, like to quote Mel Robbins, it, you need some of it at least to function, right? And number two, your baby, your little baby, your relationships, you become irritable. You become short-tempered. You become emotionally distant. You become emotionally distant. You snap at your kids. You neglect your partner and isolate yourself from your friends. Exhaustion 
also, you know, wreaks havoc on your body, your health. That's right. You're more vulnerable to illness. Your stress hormones skyrocket and you might experience everything from headaches to digestive problems. Look, you might already be feeling this or you may not, but if I know, you, look, I know you're probably thinking, but I don't have time to rest. I have a business to run, a family to care for, a million things on my plate. I get it. Trust me. I really get it. But here's the thing. Rest isn't a luxury. It's a necessity. It's a how your body and mind recharge and repair themselves. When you prioritize rest, you're not just doing yourself a favor. You're actually making yourself more productive and effective in the long run. So how do you make rest a priority? How do you make that a non-negotiable? Number one, this is what I do. And this has been working well for me for the past many months. So I feel like this is going to, so I feel like this will help you too. So number one, schedule it. Treat rest like any other important appointment. Block out time in your calendar for naps, for early bedtimes, or just doing nothing. And number two, you're going to create a sleep sanctuary. I know I came up with that. Make your bedroom a haven for rest. Invest in, you know, a good, comfortable bedding. Block out light and noise and create a relaxing bedtime routine. It might be, you know, uh, listening to a relaxing song or in my case, violin. So calming violin music. So that's the first thing that I search for when I go on YouTube. So I play like five to 10 minutes of that and just do nothing. Just meditate or do something and then go off to bed. That's so peaceful. You, you have to try this. And number three, fuel your body. Nourish yourself with healthy whole foods that provide Nourish yourself with healthy whole foods that provide sustained energy. Avoid avoid processed foods, sugar, and excessive caffeine. You know, you last thing that you want on top of all the stress that you're going through is to crash on sugar. Is okay. So the last thing that you want is to be a victim of sugar crash. So let's keep that on the plate. Or just take moderated. Don't just cut it out altogether. Moderate it. When you feel like you have to just question, do I really need this sugar? Do I really need to drink caffeine? If not, don't. Unless you really, really need to, that's when you take that thing. Got it? Okay, so learn to say no. That's the next thing. You're going to say no to a lot of things. You don't have to say yes to every opportunity, to every request. Protect your time and energy by saying no to things that don't align with your priorities. Just say no. Remember, ladies, you're not a machine. You need rest, just like your phone needs to be recharged. So ditch the guilt and embrace rest. Your body, your mind, your business will thank you. Now, if you're constantly exhausted, it might be easy to think, okay, I'm just overworked. I need to set better boundaries. But here's the deal. If you're feeling constantly overrun, like you're drowning in to-dos and demands, it's not because you're not working hard enough. It's because you haven't built the damn dam to hold back the flood. So boundaries, baby. The boundaries are those invisible lines you draw around your time, your energy, and your sanity. They're not about being cold or uncaring. They're just about protecting what matters most to you. Think of them as your personal force field against the energy vampires and the time suckers of the world. Now, setting boundaries is not always easy. I get it. I mean, I had like literally no boundaries for most part of my life for uh, 20, 22 years, I guess. So I until a year ago when I really started to take things under my control. But ever since I started doing that, things, oh my God, life just turned around for the better, like literally. So especially for us people who have been conditioned to be nice and accommodating, it's not easy. And I get it. But let me tell you, being a doormat ain't going to get you to the top. It's time to reclaim your power and get some boundaries that make you feel respected and in control. So how do you do this? Here's where things get juicy. Identify your boundary needs. 
Start by tuning into your body and emotions. When do you feel resentful? Just ask yourself these questions when you're free. When do you feel resentful? When do you feel drained or like you're being taken advantage of? Those are your boundary red flags. So if you feel like, if you get answers for any of these questions, those are your boundary red flags. So the, next we're gonna talk about the types of boundaries. Yeah, that's right. Boundaries come in all shapes and sizes, babes. Number one, work boundaries. Set clear office hours, turn off notifications after a certain time. Or I actually read this in an article and I've been using this too. So when you start your day, open your calendar. And the first thing that you're going to do is plan your shutdown routine. So this is literally setting your work boundary. So you're going to set clear office hours. Let's say you're, you're starting the day at nine. And if you're going to end at like five, six or something, the period from 5.30 to six, you do nothing. Okay? You're just going to shut down. You're just going to clear everything, turn off notifications after 5.30 and learn to say no to projects that do not align with your goals. And number two, personal boundaries. Yeah. And number two, you got to be clear about what you're willing and not willing to tolerate in your relationships. Don't let people disrespect your time. Not that I got to tell you this. I mean, if you're a boss, I mean, you obviously not be, but sometimes our, you know, the nice people inside our heads, they tend to take over and that's okay. And just remember that don't let people disrespect your time, your feelings, or your values. Yeah. That is the most important thing, in my opinion. The last thing, the values, because I personally was a victim of this. I talked about this in one of the previous episodes, ditching the dead end job. So uh, if you want to talk about how, if you want to listen to me ranting about how I sacrificed my values for a fucking paycheck, feel free to. And yes, don't let people disregard, dismiss your feelings, disrespect your time, or disregard your values. Because those are important, babe. And the last one, protect your energy from the constant onslaught of social media and emails. Set specific times to check messages. You got to set these digital boundaries and don't be afraid to unplug completely on weekends or vacations. You don't have to do this. You deserve that vacation. If you're going to take time off, you're going to take them completely off. You're going to be like radio silent to your colleagues, to your employees, and whoever the fuck it may be, you deserve that time, okay? Just take some time off. It's okay. Put everything down. And now you've set those boundaries. How do you communicate them? This is where things get real. Be clear. Be clear, be direct, and be unapologetic. Use I statements. They, they work for me. I need some space right now. Or I am not available to work on weekends. I need this room to myself. I am going to go take a fucking bubble bath. So these are some examples. And feel free to know And number three, we plan these boundaries. We've communicated them. How do you enforce them? How do you actually make them happen? This is actually the hardest part, but it's crucial. If people try to cross your boundaries, gently remind them and hold firm. Okay, just gently remind them, hey, I'm not uh, really in a good place right now. I'm going to shut down. I need some time alone. Just hold firm. No matter what they say, hold firm. No. Just saying, if that thing is not urgent, if no one's going to come, crack, no company, no, your business is, if, if people try to cross your boundaries, hold firm and gently remind them, oh, hey, this is not what I want. This is not what I want to be doing right now. I need some time off. I'm going to take some time off. I need this break. So. Could you come back later? Even if that doesn't cut off, and if that thing that the other guys that are holding on to is not urgent, I mean, just shut, slam the door on them. I mean, sometimes I know it feels like you're hurting them, but just do it. Sometimes it helps. They won't hate you. They just, or they, and just drop, you know, a DM or later or something, just saying that, hey, hey I'm sorry, I know, but I'm not, I was not feeling good. And that works too. This is the worst case scenario, but in most cases, just holding yourself firm, holding your ground, and just gently reminding them, does the job. Remember, you're not responsible for their reactions, only for protecting your own well-being. Be selfish. It's fine. Sometimes it's okay, really. Now, 
let's get tactical. I've got one quick challenge for you. This week, you're going to pick one area of your life where you need stronger boundaries. Maybe it's with a needy client. Maybe it's with a draining, that annoying as a family member or your own addictive, you know, reels, scrolling habit. Set a clear boundary in that area and commit to upholding it. It might feel uncomfortable at first, but trust me, it surely gets easier with practice. And the reward, a life where you feel respected, a life where you feel empowered, in control of your own time and energy. And isn't that what being a badass entrepreneur is all about? All right, ladies, we've talked about ditching the hustle and setting boundaries like a boss. So now let's dive into the final piece of the burnout puzzle. Self-care. Yeah, I know, I know. It's, you're probably rolling your eyes thinking, oh, great, another self-care lecture. But hold on, because this is not your typical bubble bath and green smoothie talk. We're going to go deeper. We're, we're going to talk about why self-care isn't just a nice to have, but it's a non-negotiable for entrepreneurial success. We've all been fed this image of the ideal entrepreneur, the one who works 24-7, sacrifices sleep for spreadsheets, and puts their business about everything else. But we got to be real. That is a recipe for disaster. Trying to be the perfect selfless CEO is a fast track to burnout. When you neglect your own needs, you're running on fumes, and eventually, your tank's going to hit empty. Think about it. How can you possibly show up as your best self for your clients, for your team, or even your family, if you're constantly running on empty. The truth is, self-care is not selfish. It's the secret weapon of successful entrepreneurs because they care for themselves. Why do you think Elon Musk? Why do you think Jeff Bezos is all successful? Because they care. And they take time off to care for themselves. When you prioritize your well-being, you're not just taking a break. You're investing in your most valuable asset, yourself. When you prioritize your well-being, you're not just taking a break. You're investing in your most valuable asset, yourself. And here's the kicker. Self-care does not have to be complicated or expensive. It's about, you know, finding small, simple ways to recharge your batteries and reconnect with your inner badass. Now, I'm going to give you a few actionable self-care tips. And like I said, they're not going to be sexy either. So number one, move your majesty, move your butt. Even a 10-minute walk counts. Even a dance party in your freaking living room counts. Or if possible, if you're like, you know, a guru or fitness guru, a yoga guru or obsessed with that, a quick yoga session, a quick stretch can make a huge difference. Just move. Just don't sit in that comfy office chair, that ergonomy chair that you're used to. But just get up, okay? Just get up, go out. And then flail around like a freaking penguin. That counts, okay? You just got to move and so that you, you can get those endorphins running in your brain. So that will make you feel good. Okay? And self-care, in my opinion, is the best form of self-love. And number two, you're going to nourish your soul. You're going to do something that brings you joy, whether it's reading a book, whether it's listening to music, or just taking a hot bath, or spending time in nature. Just go out and look at those you know, giant-ass trees. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's like spring right now. So yeah, and I'm moving into summer, but yeah, the abuse must be pretty good. It's not rain right now, but in your, I hope that in your case, just go out, just admire the nature, take it all in, breathe, okay? And number three, you're going to connect with your loved ones. You're going to schedule time for meaningful conversations with your partner, with your kids, or with your friends. You're literally going to schedule this like we talked before in your calendar. That's right. Laughter and connection are powerful medicine. And yeah, this number four is something I already told you, but I feel like it wouldn't hurt to remind you. So turn off your phone, close your laptop, step away from the digital world. Give yourself permission to disconnect and recharge. It's fine. Your clients can go fuck themselves for 20 minutes. Nothing bad is going to happen. You're just taking care of yourself, okay? And number 
five, say no, don't overcommit. Learn to say no to requests that drain your energy. See, all of these count. I know I've been getting repetitive. See, but the reason I'm getting repetitive with this is I want to emphasize the benefits that come along with this, you know. And remember, ladies, your business cannot thrive if you are not thriving. So make self-care priority. It's not just about pampering yourself. It's about showing up as your best self in every aspect of your life. So I challenge you to take one self-care action today. Just one, okay? It does not have to be anything major. Just something small that brings you joy, that helps you recharge. Share it with me in the comments or even better, share this podcast in your Instagram stories and tag Cyrax. The handle is S-Y-R-A-X-F-I-T, Cyrax Fit. Yeah, we'll hear your second stories. Let's see how that worked out for you. And we've just scratched the surface of ditching the house and reclaiming your spark. But don't worry, I've got you covered. If you're ready to dive deeper into actionable strategies, all right in your inbox, head over to the Cyrax Squad Mail. It's my newsletter. I am writing this on substack.com, S-U-B-S-T-A-C-K.com. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description. So head over to Cyrax Squad Mail, your weekly dose mindset and fitness fuel. We're, we're going to be talking about building businesses that light us up. We're going to be talking about mindset makeovers that rewiring those, you know, limiting beliefs. And we're going to be talking about sustainable fitness strategies that work for busy, ambitious women like you. So don't let burnout steal your joy. Join the Cyrax squad and start your journey to a life that's both fulfilling and successful. Subscribe for free at cyraxfit.substack.com. Yeah, just say at the Instagram handle before if you're going to go straight to the landing page. Because as we say at Cyrax, simple works just fine. So thanks for tuning in to another episode of Cyrax Fitness Podcast. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time with me. And I will see you soon, real soon, in the next episode of the Cyrax Mindset and Fitness Podcast. This is your boy, Karthik R., your host and high boy, reminding you that you're capable of incredible things. I am rooting for you. Now go out there and slay the day. I'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.